Hi there, this is Ashley. I am here with my friend Tiffany. But let me uh, introduce yourself, introduce you to me. Um, my cultural or ethnic background, I guess, would have to be mostly white, um, but obviously mixed in with some Latin American roots. Uh, my friend Tiffany is a Pacific Islander. Her age range is 35 to 40. Um, she's obviously a female. And she has both a bachelor's and a master's degree. And she is actually a fellow elementary librarian. So let's jump right into things. Uh, let's please describe to me the most important values and beliefs of your culture. Well, I think that the Hawaiian culture, one of the most important values is just aloha. And, you know, you say that as hello and goodbye. Um, but that to me means, or to us means um, love and showing kindness and compassion. And I think the other one is also ohana, which means family, in case you didn't know. Um, if you didn't watch Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> but that is basically like just family. Hawaii is family to me. And it's just... Um, you know, aloha and oh right, yeah. a loving feeling. That you yes, have. yes. Um, so, describe some events, some celebrations, and some practices in your culture. Um, well, there's a lot of hula. <laughs> um, they do have a lot of performances, and then we do have some um, lei day, and then there's the king kamehameha day. There are um, luau celebrations as well that they do, which I think the typical tourist gets to experience that when they go to Hawaii, but it's not all that. Um, but those are some of the, the celebrations um, and events that we do have. Um, Mary Monarch Festival is a big hula festival that they have. Um, and then, like I said, May Day, they do have to celebrate um, Boys and Girls Day, which is a um, more predominant Japanese culture. Um, but there's a lot of Hawaiian, Chinese, Japanese right. culture in Hawaii, so right. it kind of makes sense. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so what are some reading materials or some films or videos that <clears throat> maybe could help us learn a little bit more about your culture or learn some stereotypes that maybe aren't about your culture? Right. Well, there are some of the recent, the, you know, movie that came out was Moana. It's sort of the Hawaiian culture, but that was more, that was more specific to that movie. Um, Lilo and Stitch is a horrible example. <laughs> um, there was one movie. movie called Blue Hawaii that sort of told some of the Hawaiian culture, but it had like, a, um, a Miley was the main girl character of an Elvis Presley's character, right, but right. there was some, like she was half white and half Hawaiian. So that kind of gave you some parts really they haven't had that many hawaiian culture videos that are great right um there was one that recently came out i think in 2009 called princess um kuala or i'm sorry say, princess kaulani i say i'm horrible with pronunciations <laughs> um and um there's a few other books like I, some of the children's books that i like are a is for aloha um and then there's a couple of aloha is um but there's not, and then there's some just random Hawaii books, but I don't think that mostly tells you like maybe what you should go visit, right. not necessarily what Hawaii is about. It's about. Yeah. Right. But maybe there are some, and I just haven't read them because sure. I grew you up haven't been in Hawaii. Hawaii. I haven't yeah. been there in a while. Right. So how do you think others outside of your culture view your culture? Um, I think that it's the Hawaiian culture. I mean, it, a lot of the pictures they show, you know, people are surfing or they're on the beach and it's all relaxing and you know rich and beautiful and gorgeous which it is but that's not the true Hawaiian culture because the people who live there like my family or my ohana that lives there they don't live in a mansion right they don't live in a hut either right um but that's you know we'll talk about that a little bit later right. I think <laughs> um but just viewing that it's just so relaxing and nice and fun and you know and it is it's it's a very nice Lifestyle. Lifestyle. Nice lifestyle. Yeah. So what are the fondest memories you have from your childhood? Mm. I think just the hanging out with my family um, when we would go and visit and spend time there. I grew up lived there, so I was seven. Uh, but just getting to spend time with them and just going 
Holo Holo, which is, you know, traveling and visiting and kind of tour, doing little mini, um, vac not vacations, but, like, you know, tours. just touring around and just going around doing whatever, running errands or looking at things and just getting, and you know, eating the food and hanging out and going to visit, you know, some of the volcanoes. Mm -hmm. And we went up to Mauna Kea, there where it snows, is one of the mountains that, mountain ranges that are there. Um, sort of being tourists, but then also just spending time with my family. Um, my grandpa had a macadamia nut tree and farms, and he would shell those and, nice. you know, feed chickens because they raise chickens right. and, I mean, pigs. He had pigs. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and then, you know, just spending time with the family, with the family. there and, you know, my cousins and my grandparents and right. my uncles. That's great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so this is a little harder. Have you personally experienced prejudice or discrimination? Um. I personally haven't, and it was it's kind of interesting because I did grow up in, I was born in Hawaii, I lived there till I was seven, um, and then I moved to Michigan with my stepdad and my mom and my siblings, and it was, I guess in elementary school, I, you know, didn't really see it, didn't really know too much of what um, that, I mean, I didn't really understand, I didn't see it, it wasn't right. obvious to me. Right. Um, I did know there was a, a rough part of town where my parents didn't want me to go to um, a particular middle school, so I ended up growing up and I went my June sixth, seventh, eighth grade to, um, or actually sixth through tenth grade. I went to a Christian school, um, was Grace Baptist, and so I was the only um, darker skinned right. person. But I didn't really, I didn't, I wasn't treated that way because right. I mean, you think you know, in, in, in any religion, you, most of the time you're, you know, you're accepting of everybody. Right. And I didn't really realize that, or, and I, my best friend who was white, she, you know, we were hanging out one day or something like that. She's like, oh, we're just two white girls hanging out. And I said, well, I'm not white. And she didn't even really realize it. Right. I didn't, you know, think that I was not white. Right. But I mean, I, I just, I, I never really experienced that, you know, discrimination, maybe because I'm Asian and, you know, who knows? I mean, but I, I was never discriminated against. I mean, thankfully, it wasn't. Right, right. Yeah, that's um, good. That's good. But, yeah. So, given what has happened in recent events, what do you think can be done about prejudice and discrimination for those those people that do actually feel it? Right. I think, I mean, I personally think, yes, you need to learn about prejudice and what discrimination is. And just encouraging our students and our kids to um, just be kind and be sweet no matter what you are, no matter what you look like, no matter what color, no matter what religion you choose, mm -hmm. it's hard mm -hmm. um, because you only see them, or you see them eight for, well, as a librarian, you only see them one hour or so each day. Yeah, um, every week. Every week, right. right. But I think it's just encouraging them, yes, is being aware. And then even showing them, too, you know, this is what prejudice looks like, or this yeah. is what being discriminated against looks like. Um, I think there was that video, there was a video that said something about where the kids were all lined up and they said, okay, take one step forward if you had this, if you had a two-parent home, take one step forward if you, you know, had this and this, this, and mm -hmm. like one of those, showing them what it was, what you, what discrimination is mm -hmm. and had letting them experience it. Mm -hmm. And then maybe they'll kind of realize, oh, wow, I do need to treat everybody the same right. just because, you know, I had to grow up, grow up with two parents. Somebody else doesn't. They right. might not have this you know, their mom works nights, my mom didn't, you right. know, I mean, it's just being aware of it and aware. showing empathy. That's the thing I think that we lack is just empathy and like you're making fun. Oh, you wore that outfit yesterday or, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah you because they to... lost their house in the flood, you right. know, or exactly. something you never sure. know what other people are going through and it's just to be kind and be sweet and be sure. empathetic to what could be happening in someone's life. Sure. What do you think is the biggest misconception about your culture? Oh my goodness. When you get off the plane. What's the misconception? <laughs> Should I be wearing my legs? Yes. Yeah. You will not get a leg when you get off the airplane. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I think that they think everyone in Hawaii is rich. They live in mansions and they don't. I mean, my parents, my, my grandparents, my, um, you know, aunts and uncles, my cousins live with my, their aunt, their parents because they can't afford to purchase land on their own or to live because it's so expensive. Right. You know, I mean, they have jobs, they work and, uh, you know, they work in the hotel industry. They're, you know, they're chefs or they're, um, I can't think of my cousin's like a manager at one of the hotels. And then her parents, they are, you know, they worked in the hotel business. They're bartenders. My mm -hmm. uncles are bartenders. Mm -hmm. My aunt worked at TSA. 
Um, so they, they, they have normal jobs where yes. they can't afford million dollar houses. Right. You know, I mean, their houses are worth to, or that's just not in their houses that's worth that much. It's the land the that land, they live in. It's sure. a small piece of land sure. and it's worth half a million dollars, right. but who can afford that? Yeah. Right. Um, when you're working at a right. quote unquote minimum wage, or not minimum wage, but like a middle class sure. job. Yeah. Um, also not everyone serves. Right. Sure. My dad actually wanted my, when my grandpa, um, when he was younger, my dad wanted a surfboard and my grandpa said, you can't eat by surfing or something. Oh, okay. So you're going right. to, so they taught him how to fish and nice. so, you know, so, so my dad didn't even surf. My dad was born and raised, still does live in Hawaii. Right. Um, let me think what else. We don't all wear coconut shell bikinis. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm trying to think what else. I mean, we wear normal clothes. Sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just, it's, it's just what the people main think. Thing. It's, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Um, but the food is good. That what, is one thing. There's yes. some really good Hawaiian food. I bet there the is. The lao lao. I miss it. My mouth is watering just thinking about all those. It sounds good, delicious, and I don't even know what it is. <laughs> Kalua pig. Oh, yeah. Uh, so as religious, ethnic, and cultural diversity increases in our society, what do you think schools can do to better, better prepare students to interact with others who are different from themselves? So you kind of mentioned this a little while. Right. It was just kind of teaching kids to be empathetic. Right. I just, I think the more we make them aware of it, but not necessarily, I mean, just say that's, that was what happened. We can change things and we can think we have changed. I mean, look at even with, you know, um, blacks being, you know, discriminated against that no longer happens. We're integrated. We're not segregated, you know, exactly in schools, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean that, that happened. We've learned from it, Sure. you know, and even with, um, the Jews and um, Hitler. I mean, right. There's there's history that happened, and we don't want to repeat that. Sure. Um, and we just, like I said, making kids to be, you know, aware of it and to prevent it um, and to not make fun and just be kind and be sweet. Like some of the things that they say, you know, they don't even think they even realize that it's not nice. It's, yeah. It's, it is hurtful. It can be. Right. right. So there's like just getting the kids to be nice and say yeah. nice things i mean i, I think, think that setting that for a lot. right and setting that growth mindset too of saying hey I, this is how i'm going to be this is like and even they're even they're hard they're hard on themselves mm-hmm. you know i mean they're like oh i suck at this or i'm right you know i can't do this i can't get it right i can't find this i can't right. no don't be negative be positive sure i seem to have forgotten my pencil you know can i borrow one from you or something I mean, right. just that mindset of getting them to think differently right um and how they interact with themselves and with other people for sure, sure. um well i thank you very much my pacific islander friend you are welcome. for coming over and helping me and we are out